Albert Einstein once defined compound interest as the eighth wonder of the world. In his words, he who understands it, earns it, and he who doesn't, pays it. Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Behroz. I am a finance executive by profession and a personal development and growth coach by passion. In this video, we will talk about the power of compounding. Compound interest is such a powerful yet a neglected idea. Now, I'm sure you've heard about the power of compound interest before. Rather, I'm sure you've heard about it many times. Now, what makes this time different? Honestly, nothing. Unless I can persuade you to take it very seriously. And if I do, honestly, I will change your life forever because the stakes are very high. So essentially in simple finance terms, what this means is that you don't take out the interest that you earn on your investment, rather you keep investing that interest back as part of your investment so you can earn interest on top of your interest, which has essentially become your investment now. I know this is pretty simple and it won't make a lot of difference now, but it's just like consistency over time. It's ultimately the invisible force that will eventually make all the difference. So this video is broken into following four parts. First of all, I will talk about the case for compounding. Second, I will talk about the power of compounding. Third, I will talk about the power of time in the compounding equation. And fourthly, I will talk about the fact that why, given that this idea is so powerful, it doesn't come naturally to us. Now, before moving forward, in case you like the video, please don't shy away from pressing the like button and also subscribe to the channel so you get notified as soon as I put a new content on this channel. Now, let's get moving. Now, let me build the case for compounding. Warren Buffet, one of the wealthiest people in the world, when asked as to what is the key behind his investment success, he said without skipping a beat, compounding interest. Now let's talk about the power of compounding. Given the idea is not very easy to explain in words, I will make use of some numbers to illustrate it clearly. Now in the table that you see, you have two investors, myself and my friend Ali. Both of us are in a race to create maximum amount of wealth in the next 30 years. Now clearly Ali is focused on compounding interest and hence he saves his $20,000 in an investment account that earns him 15% return. On the other hand, I am not interested or don't believe in compounding interest. And hence, I decide to save far more than Ali, which is save $20,000 every year, but put it in an account which earns no interest or no return at all. Now, in 30 years time, Ali, who only saved $20,000 and invested, is a millionaire now. On the other hand, me, who invested 30 times more than Ali, is not. The interest or return that Ali accrued on his money somehow gave him an invisible momentum, which mine didn't get. This invisible momentum is what Albert Einstein referred as the eighth wonder of the world, the compounding interest. Clearly confused and furious, I ask Ali for a rematch and he humbly agrees. However, this time he wants to invest $20,000 every year for 10 years in the same compounding interest account where he earns 15% return. So hearing this, I go like, this time I won't make the mistake that I made last time and I will also invest in the compounding interest account. However, I will start as of year 10 but go for 20 years instead of 10 years only, which is I start at year 10 and will end till year 30. So I will be investing more in number of years than him. Now here's what happened. After 30 years, despite me investing twice as much as Ali, which is I invested for 20 years, instead Ali only invested for 10 years, I still lost and Ali made 5 million more than me. And therein lies the key factor that is the power behind compounding efforts and consistency that is time which is that you begin early and you start early. In that case, you will get the invisible momentum in favor of you and hence you will be generating more returns. Timing is everything. Starting as soon as possible and being consistent unlocks the magic of compounding interest. So primarily, if you want to do good as an investor, you need to increase your time horizon. Time is the most powerful force in investing. It makes little things grow big and it makes big mistakes fade away. Now, it certainly can't neutralize luck or risk. However, it can push results towards what people really deserve. Now, let's elaborate more on this power of time with using a real life example, which is a foreign book. Now, a lot of books have been written on how good of an investor Warren Buffett is. However, only few have paid attention to the fact that he is not just a good investor, rather he has been a good investor since he was literally a child. Now imagine, out of total wealth of 84.5, 81.5 billion came after he turned 65. Our minds literally are not built to handle such kind of growth in numbers. Now Warren Buffett is a phenomenal investor. However, you miss a point if you link all his success to his investment acumen. The real deal is that he has been a phenomenal investor for three quarters of a century now. If he started investing when he was 30 and retired in 60, not many people would have heard of him. Now let's take a thought experiment. Warren Buffett started investing when he was 10 years old and by the time he turned 30, his net worth was $1 million, which adjusted for inflation is approximately $9.3 million. Now let's assume instead of starting at the age of 10, he started investing at the age of 30. Let's assume he started with $25,000 and earned the same kind of returns that he has actually earned, which is approximately 22% annually. 
Now, starting late at the age of 30, assuming he's still earning 22% return on his investment, he would end up with approximately $11.9 million at the age of 60, which is 99% less than the net worth that he carries today. This remarkable difference is only driven by smaller time horizon. That is, he starts investing at the age of 30 instead of at the age of 10 and loses 20 years of compound. Effectively, all of Warren Buffett's financial success can be attributed to the investment that he was making in the initial few years. His skill is investing, but his secret is time. That is how compounding works. Now think of this in another way, which Morgan Husserl also talks about in his book, The Psychology of Money. Jim Simons, head of hedge fund Renaissance Technology, has been compounding his investments at 66% annually since 1988. No one comes close to this record. Not even Warren Buffet, who has only been compounding his investments at 22% growth annually. However, despite compounding the investment at a higher rate, Jim Simon's net worth is $21 billion, which is 75% less than Warren Buffet's total net worth. So what's the difference? If Jim Simons has been compounding his investments at three times higher rate than Warren Buffet, then how come he is ending up with net worth which is smaller than Warren Buffet? The answer is because Jim Simons didn't find his investment stride till he was at the age of 50. He has had less than half as many years that Warren Buffet had to compound his investment. Now imagine if Jim Simons was earning his 66% annual return for 70 years, his net worth would have been, and I can't even say it because given the number of zeros in the figure, but here's the figure. There are books on economic cycles, trading strategies, investing strategies. However, the most important book that needs to be out there needs to be called Shut Up and Wait. Good investment is not necessarily about earning the highest return because highest return can be a one-off hit and may not be repeated again. It's all about earning pretty good returns that you can stick with and repeat over a long period of time. This is where compounding goes wild. Now let's talk about why compounding, despite it being so powerful concept, doesn't come naturally to us. The numbers that I just talked are ridiculous and impractical. The point here is that what seems like small change in growth assumptions may end up leading to impractical and ridiculous numbers. And so when we are studying why something became so big, so powerful, we often overlook the key driver. This is simply because the results intuitively don't seem right. Linear thinking is much intuitive than exponential thinking. So for instance, an example of linear thinking would be if you have to add four eights together, which is eight, 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 it would be 32. However, if you have to calculate 8 multiplied by 8 multiplied by 8 multiplied by 8, it would be difficult for our brain to make that calculation. The danger here is that when compounding is not intuitive, we often ignore its potential and focus on solving a problem through other means. Not because we are overthinking, but we rarely stop to assess and understand the potential of compounding. So net net, it is hard to wrap your head around this concept and math because it is not linear and it is not intuitive.